Hello, it's Duncan. I rehearse these videos so they aren't too much of a trial to watch. I figure you don't want to see all the dead ends and git reverts. That does mean though that mostly you don't get to see why I take the route that makes the edit. Which is a problem because it looks like I'm a cleverer developer than I am. In reality, I try things and my talent is giving up on a bad idea quickly and learning from the attempt. Often that feedback is provided by the tests. Sometimes they fail and sometimes they're difficult to make pass but it's when they're difficult to write or maintain that they give the best design feedback. Last episode, I said that I was listening to the tests to guide a refactoring, but I realized I didn't actually show them talking before diving in and making the change. So this week, I'm going to make a change to the test first so that we can both hear what they say. To see the test talking to us, let's try making one tiny change to our code. What we're going to do is turn on pricing. we would set that to true. And now let's run the tests. Now you can see we have four tests that fail. And they're all failing because we're now rendering a price, although we don't actually have a price to render. Same thing here, the empty one, the header has changed. And here again. Now we already have some tests for this rendering. But the fact is that we are only testing most of our application through the user interface in our list stock tests. So that's here. We're asserting that the HTML is an approved version, which is really hiding changes. Approval tests are great for getting tests up and running, but they can be fragile, as we're seeing here. Four of them have failed, and they're not really very good at communicating what we think should happen. Now, I think it's reasonable to test the full path through this application, this list stock here with an approval to test. But things like here, where we're seeing the file updates, or we are or aren't updating, depending on the last modified date, those things shouldn't depend on the way that we render, and they shouldn't be tested through our user interface. Ideally, our application would be structured so that we could isolate the behavior that we're interested in and test just that. But also, ideally, we'd be testing the application as it is actually configured, which means wired up like our production app, as far as we can. So I'm going to undo that change so that our tests are all passing as we refactor, and we'll see what we can do to expose that functionality to the tests. So here's where that functionality is implemented. It's the interaction between our stock here and the pricing that's passed into our roots. And this ended up here because we pulled it up from inside our list handler, but we haven't pulled it up all the way to the top of our application. And because the functionality is wired up here, we can't actually test it separately. We're having to go through the user interface to test whether or not this particular piece of code works. Let's see if we can fix that. What we're going to do is we're going to extract a method here of those two lines of code. And function will do as a name. And now we move that expression out as a parameter. Now, if we look at the caller, we'll see that that function has been moved up here but IntelliJ hasn't made it public, so we can't access it, which is a shame, but we can fix that just by changing that. And now these other parts, the stock file and the pricing are unused here, so we can remove them. Let's just check that still passes the tests. Okay, so we haven't broken anything. And now we can inline this, and we can use listing as the name. I think that's not a bad name because it's the thing that exchanges the time for a stock list, which will now be priced up. Run again. And now this function is just a single expression. We can make it so. Now, what is this function? Well, it takes a stock file and some way of pricing stock and returns another function that returns a loaded stock list. We call that listing up above. So I think maybe I'm going to call it listing for. And I'm going to take these and move them up into the app, or at least into the file of the app. We'll put them down there for now. And again, just check that that still passes all the tests. Good. Now let's remind ourselves where that's used. And the answer is it's used here. We call that function as a parameter to our roots for. Now this uses some of the properties of our app. So we could take this thing and move it up as a method. And if we did, then we could remove the stock file and pricing because then they'd be resolved by these properties. So I could take those out of there and there and run that. Splendid. Now it doesn't seem unreasonable for this stock to be another property, which would allow this to be a single expression, 
like that. Run that. Now what I want to do is make this lambda expression into a method. And the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to extract this thing as that method. And that I think is load stock list. Now I can make this whole thing into a reference. And if I inline listing for, I end up passing the method reference into our roots. So what we have now is we have a method that represents what our app does in order to load stock. And if we make that public, then we call it from outside. Tidy up a little bit. I think we can make this private. We can rearrange our properties a bit. And finally, there's something a little bit strange here because this function needs now, but inside our roots here, this is going to be passed into list handler and list handler is going to use the time from our clock. So this now is going to be resolved to the time from whatever our clock says in production. I think we could reflect that by saying that the default of this is whatever the clock says. And check that passes the tests. Wonderful. So now we can return to our list stock tests and use that method to simplify our tests. Let's look at list stock. We could now say that our app load stock list should be something like the stock list that we saved. And app in our fixture isn't public, so we can fix that. See whether that works. It doesn't seem to compile for some reason, although that is public. Might try a clean build. Apparently not. Back to the command line, maybe. Try running tests again. Well, that seems to have compiled correctly. It's a bit embarrassing, really. I'm afraid that IntelliJ just doesn't work sometimes. But now at least we can go and see what our issue here is. Well, the first is that app stock list returns a result type. So we need to wrap this in success. Try that. Now we're still failing. And the reason is because we're now using pricing, although we have null prices. Why do we have null prices? Well, that's because of this no op pricing here, that we're always putting a null, in fact, a success of null into the price of our items. Back here, we can express that as with null prices, if that existed. We can bring it into existence as an extension function in the test. What would that look like? So we're going to say return this dot copy, whatever our outer stock list is, we're going to copy it with the items to be items where each one of those is replaced by an item with null price. That doesn't exist, so we can create that as well. And this would be price is success of nulls. If you remember with our prices, we are remembering whether or not they failed inside our items. I'm not sure about that decision, but it's what we have. So this is going to return an item, which can make this whole thing an expression. And we can fix that. And then this is just an expression. Okay, let's see whether that passes the tests. Good. So let's just remind ourselves what we've done here. We've exposed this app load stock list so that we can test at the level of the stock list that the app will then pass into its rendering. We're also here testing the rendering. And I think that's not a bad idea for this list stock because we want to show that the rendering is actually wide up. It does work as we expect. Moving on, list stock seems file updates. Let's pull the same trick. Here we're saving an empty stock list on disk and showing that that's what we load. So that we have to look in our approved file to see that list file sees stock list updates, that there are no items. But we can't see that from our tests here. We could do better. We could say that if we remember this time, then once we've saved the stock list, if we then ask the app to load it, that should be success of a stock list with the last modified as Last modified and no items because we know we saved an empty list here. Let's check that. Good. 
And in fact, as this and this should be the same thing, we can fold this out as saved stop list, which will allow us to align that. Now we don't need the approval set to show what the app is loading, so we can delete that and that and that and run. And I think we can get rid of that as well. Moving on. In doesn't update when last modified is today, we're showing that when we set the time to the last available second of the day, then we still load the same stock list, but that's hidden again inside our approved. So that we should just be able to say here, assert equals success of our stock list with null prices is what happens if you ask the app to load the stock list. See whether that's true. And now that it is, we can get rid of the approved. And this is just checking that we haven't updated the file on disk, well, which isn't a bad test, I think. Take that out and delete that and run again. Splendid. Now the next test shows that we do update. So we know we're going to have a different stock list when we look at it. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this assertion and put it into here. And then I'm going to make a variable of this stock list and inline this. Now we expect the qualities to change from the 42 and 101 because time has passed and these will be out of date. So I happen to know that these will become 40 and 99 and the undated ones don't degrade over time. So that one won't have changed. We're depending here on the strategy for our update, but I think that's probably just the truth. These integration tests, we're going to have to depend on some details if we know we're working properly. Let's try to run. Oh, we were close. Let's have a look. Oh, we should have changed the date. So we should have changed the date to this one here will be the date of the stock list that we end up loading. Try again. Good. And now that we have this stock list, in fact, down here where we were previously, we were just saying that when we load the stock list using the fixture, that it's not the same as the one we initially had. In fact, now we can replace this with our stock list one and change that to assert equals to show that it has changed on disk. Good. And now this is expected updated stock list and we can get rid of this and the approver and this here and run. Good. Now our final test isn't testing through the interface. It's not looking at the HTML. And it was working by damaging the stock file and then checking that we get an internal server error if we do a get and also showing that we have an event of blank name. We should probably wire this one up in the same way, but now we know that app stock list should result in a failure. What should it fail with? Well, in fact, we know that here. So if we were to pull that out as expected failure and move that up here, then we could put that in there. Let's just see whether that's right. Well, it is, and that's then nicely symmetric with the rest of the tests. Now, finally, before we check in, let's just see the effect of changing that one parameter now. And as we might expect, we've only got one failing test, which is the one place that we approve that output. Remember that we have got these stock list rendering tests that also check what happens when we enable the pricing. They're a far better place to make that check. So I'm going to undo that, rerun. And now as we begin to wire up the actual pricing service, we're in a far better position to document in our tests the way that those prices are applied than we were when we were just looking at the HTML. That should make our tests a lot easier to write. And when our tests are a lot easier to write, then our code is a lot easier to write and in particular maintain. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. If you have, then please subscribe to the next episode. And please consider buying the book that I wrote in that price called Java to Kotlin, a refactoring guidebook. Details of which are in the show notes below. Thanks for watching.